My name is Kenny Dial, and welcome to season two of the Scuba Diving Podcast. Becca, thanks for coming on. Of course, thanks for having me. And you know why you're here. <laughs> I know why I'm here. You were on a dating app. Yep. And scuba diving came up. It did. Tell me about that. Uh, so, you know, the typical open opening lines of what do you do, what's your job, and I have a diver at an aquarium, and it's always, oh, that's awesome, that's cool. Or it goes the route of, oh, yeah, I dove. I'm not certified, though. So and that like, happened. And that happened. Okay. Most recent incident, that happened, well, you know. What did you say? Uh, you, <laughs> you try to not tell someone they're being dumb by diving without being certified, but also not trying to bomb them in the, well, this is why you really should get certified. So and I did kind of the latter though, and it's like, well, you really should get certified. You know, even though you may drive trucks for a living, doesn't mean you're gonna go pick up a semi truck and go make some deliveries cross country. You're gonna get specialized training for that. All right. So, you know, maybe you dive in your buddy's pool with their gear, cool, but just saying that 30 and 50 feet, that's all you go, it's not that dangerous not really true. Now you didn't meet them up yet. This is nope. just a uh, dialogue, right? Yep. So that was really brave of you to send me that. <laughs> <laughs> you actually sent me the hold. I I can't go more than three <laughs> bits of dialogue without saying something I don't want anyone to see. I don't, I don't even get into what it is. You were just in the conversational mm -hmm. part of it. You hadn't met up or anything like that. And uh, an eligible bachelor, he goes into, I dive, but I'm not certified. And it was, it was like, you're having a very cringy moment of like, okay, because you know how that conversation is going to go. It's going to be a very machismo answer of, you know, like, well, I, I've done, you know, so many dives not being certified. I don't see the point in it. What those classes are BS. I mean, people say that and uh, it's just, it's even with the classes, the stuff we see uh, out there is, is pretty surprising that you're in a situation where you're kind of like, ah, yeah, you probably should get certified. He's telling you he's not certified, but he dives 30, 50 feet all the time, like ha, ha, ha. Maybe he's trying to impress you. Maybe. It looked tough, looked cool. Not doing great at it, but you know, trying. And it was a turnoff. Yeah. Did you feel like it sort of put you in a position of now I've got to be a mom or now I've got to be a Karen? Pretty much. In his eyes. It, it very much so. But then, you know, the professional diver in you is just like, this is someone who maybe hasn't had someone come up and go, hey, that's not okay. You should be certified to do this stuff. You know, so you put on that professional hat of, they're not my person, they're not my student to take care of, but this is a potential incident that can happen out there. You know, even with having open water divers certified, things still happen. 30 to 50 feet, that's majority of recreational depths. What happens with all those recreational accidents? What depths are those? You see near misses all the time, and we'll just call it less than 25 feet on a regular basis. And uh, it's, and I think you'd mentioned it somewhere, you can embolize in as little as five feet. You even said four feet of water. That's news to me. I heard five. Yeah, four feet. You can, if you hold your breath from four feet, stand up, air gas embolism. You can do that. If you breathe compressed air you to fill breathe, your lungs. Yes, at yeah. depth. So yeah, if you go down, say the bottom of a pool, swimming pool, your typical you know, apartment complex pool, take a breath out of a tank, Stand up, there you go. Just to go back to uh, the exchange you had on the dating app where he's trying to impress you or look tough, maybe, we don't know, by saying, oh, I dive too, I am uh, I go 30, 50 feet all the time with my friends or whatever, but I'm not certified, that's a waste of time or whatever. And you're like, yeah, it's actually kind of dangerous and went back and forth a few times and needless to say, there was no date that happened. Nope, none. Uh, in fact, it kind of ended with a, wow, you should probably take more risks. You seem pretty... Uh, him to me said that I should take more risks and that, you know, he's a big risk taker. So, you know, I should really step outside that bubble. And it's like, well, you know, it's, it's the same saying goes, there's old divers and there's bold divers. But there's no old bold divers. Did you actually say that? I did. Yeah. <laughs> nice it's a classic, but it's true, it you know? Is. Good job. Yeah. Well, you let him have it and, uh, He's not getting to uh, take you out and buy you dinner and drinks. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Realistically, do you think it was just to try and look like in, like tough and cool and interesting or whatever? Yeah, I mean, it's a decent possibility. Um, Didn't you know, work. No, it did, did not work. Did the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> did quite the opposite. You know, diving, it, it is kind of a unique niche. And so I think sometimes when people find that common ground with it, they try to oversell 
their abilities and you know their experiences on that but i mean you don't know and you're not trained <laughs> you're just you're looking the fool well that and because you know i'm not in the dating world now but at once upon a time i was when i was actually teaching so scuba was a big part of my life and so we're always traveling and doing trips and dives if I'm dating somebody, they kind of needed to dive because without that, like 50% of my week is we're not going to have anything in common. Yeah. And for me, it was kind of a prereq just so that we had those trips and events to do. There's enough people in that pool where you can find somebody. It's not that niche. Uh, and most people want to do it. So there is that potential of certifying them mm -hmm. or some way, hey, yeah, I tried it. It was easy. I just need to take a class. Cool. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, that's, that's great. And because, uh, you know... Sometimes people want to do it and they find out it's not for them. You go, okay, how deep in this relationship are we? <laughs> um, yeah. We did not get to the advanced class. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so, but like you want to find somebody that has common interest in mm -hmm. you. And if they are saying, yeah, I dive, but I think getting certified is stupid and all that. Now you know you've got a problem on your hands when you mm -hmm. go to dive because you've got somebody already with bad habits that already doesn't respect it. There's no healthy fear and doesn't see the value in training and teaching and diving professionalism, which is what we do for a living. Yeah. So it's it, and in that case, it's just it's a bad mix. It's a bad time waiting to happen. You know, like you said, going into dating and finding someone with that common interest of scuba diving, whether they have a certification already or, you know, maybe they just haven't been around someone, but they think it's kind of cool and they would like to give it a try and get certified perhaps, or even do like a Discover Scuba course or something like that, just to feel it out. Cool, awesome, let's do it, let's see it. But if you are taking that person who, oh, I dived, I'm not certified, I don't see the point in it, I, I've done it before, you know, it's I can do it now. No, because what happens if something bad goes wrong? You know, we're out on a group with a boat and your mask get, gets kicked off. Do I know your, you know how to respond? What if your red gets kicked out of your mouth? mouth? What if you get a cramp? Do you know how to respond to that? No, because all you know is, oh, maybe I shouldn't hold my breath. Even certified divers that don't respect it, they just haven't been bit yet. Mm -hmm. We've talked about that in previous podcasts. It's uh, like Kess said, you know, the kid runs out into the road chasing the ball and there's no car and he keeps doing it and thinks I can run out there and do it and over and over again, yep. but the 15th or 20th time, there is a car. Yeah. And so and, and, and they in, get bit. And in diving, you know, it's not a matter of, if something happens, it's a matter of when and knowing that you yourself have the training and have the knowledge and you're comfortable enough with your skills within your diving range to respond to an incident that may occur. Did you get a picture of this guy? Uh, just off of his profile. Okay, those are always those are always <laughs> over doctored. Got to get that Snapchat filter. <laughs> yeah. If this guy was Brad Pitt, would you have still uh, would you have just let it slide? I mean, the Brad Pitt, or just the like the Brad, Brad Pitt? Actual Brad Pitt. Well, we have our answer, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. If it was the Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, just let me know. <laughs> we have our answer. Another thing, dating and learning to dive together. I've heard a couple schools of thought on this. Mm -hmm. It's a fun activity to do together, and I think it absolutely is, as long as you both know you can do it. Like, maybe you've already done a try scuba in the pool, or, or Patty's. Discover scuba. Discover yeah. scuba. You know, you've already done a try scuba, discover scuba in the pool, and you know you can do it just those mm -hmm. basics mass clearing reg out yeah if you can handle that and you didn't freak out the rest of it you'll probably be fine you'll pick up you can yeah. clear your ears mm -hmm. those key items that you wash out in the pool because what can happen you both go into it one of you does just fine the other one not as fine and uh now you've got a problem mm -hmm. um so there is a risk element to it yes Go try it once in the pool with a professional. Mm -hmm. uh, discover scuba, try scuba, scuba experience, whatever they're marketing it as these days. Yeah. <laughs> but one time with an instructor and do it with an instructor. But if you can do it, to, if you do do it together, another thing I've heard is, well, I've seen, I've experienced this. It's like parents with children. Go in kind of almost, you can be a buddy team, but make sure each of you focuses on the instructor. Mm -hmm. and not trying to fix each other. Yes. And uh, the reason that is is because you'll end up getting upset if something goes wrong with each other. Being uh, flustered and Flustered that, yeah. and distracted. If you, you want that focus right on the instructor, mm -hmm. and then that way you don't have anyone to blame but either the instructor or yourself. But um, go do it as individuals that are going together. Yeah. And then once you're done, and I think a lot of people make this mistake, 
look at plan after I think too many people focus on the open water class like even if it's like a dating thing the real fun happens when you can go out and be free and start exploring together mm -hmm. and then do what you want after it's too many people look at the certification as the end-all be-all mm -hmm. and you haven't even really gotten to where you can enjoy it yet after that and that's all training. It's like learning to drive as the road trip. And you want to learn to drive, then do the road trip together. Yeah. So have you ever taken a class with a... So when I got certified, it was actually with my dad. And we went all the way through rescue together. And with that, the instructor we had, for at least our open water portion, his thing was like, yeah, let's do the classroom stuff back when, you know, there's still classroom and it wasn't e-learning. <laughs> right. But for your pool sessions, you know, we're going to split family up a little bit here because you know you have the familiarity with like me and my dad doing it together but there's also that like you know maybe I don't want to mess up in front of my dad or my dad has to mm. be like I'm the dad I need to make sure my daughter's okay and so to take that distraction away from it we broke up into buddy pairs with um, another couple you know I was with you know the female partner and my dad was with the male partner so that way there was that less uh, tension and anxiety over this is my kid I need to make sure she's okay That's and brilliant he didn't you know he didn't take over my learning and actually that translated out to I still have a very distinct memory of uh, my dad and I doing one of our first open water dives for the class and I couldn't get my tank strap down 14 year old me had an issue with it I was like dad can, can, can you do this for me and he looked at me he's like I'm not gonna be able to do it for you out in the real world you got to learn how to do it now. That's, that's good parenting. So, you know, I'm very thankful for those lessons um, early on in my dive career. And for an instructor like that, that really let us grow individually, but then also as a family together in our diving. Yeah, what you just said is huge. And so many parents want to be there. Like we had a rule where you could not be at the pool. Now, as they got toward the last day of diving, a little different, the skills are done, all that mm -hmm. stuff's over with different story but the beginning if they their focus is torn on worrying about what their parent and the instructor thinks neither person is getting full focus and like you said with your dad you're worried so much about them that it's distracting yeah I've found that the parents that disappear or or like you said have a hands-off let ask the instructor don't ask me mm -hmm. those students do very well and then they end up getting that result they're looking at people forget about the result they're really after is to yeah. be able to go and dive together mm -hmm. again so focused on the class itself as an instructor that has dealt with this did the kids scuba camps and man I'll tell you we had to put it right in the waivers that like you cannot be present for water training mm -hmm. so it was so important that they were anywhere near that pool and you almost had to put guards up you cannot be with an eye shot of that pool if they can look around and see you that's too close. Yep. Find something else to do, whatever you got to do, but mm -hmm. don't be here at the pool. Uh, come in at the end, you know, or whatever, but it's so important to keep that focus on the instructor, and that's why it's so important to make sure you find a good instructor mm -hmm. that understands that and knows how to handle it. Yeah, but circling back to, like, have I been, you know, in a relationship with someone and gone through, like, a scuba class with them? I haven't. Um, the closest thing is one of my really good friends in high school, he was interested in it, and I was like, hey, I know a great instructor, my instructor, that I had, you know, he's really great. I'll go with you to the classes. I'll, I'll just be there as a familiar face, you know, but you're you're gonna focus with the instructor. Have any questions? That's the instructor, because at the time I was only rescue, so I didn't have a professional side to it. It was just, yeah, I'll go with you, man. We'll go have fun, it's fine, we'll go dive. And I was at the bottom of the pool, just sitting down there, just kind of do dozing off, because it was after, you know, a day at school, so we were there for a late session. And I felt my instructor shake my arm, and I, you know, snap too, and he looked at me and he was like, your buddy is out of air, what are you gonna do? And just brought me into the class that way. And I was just like, what? <laughs> and so, you know, I snapped into it like, oh, okay, like here's my Octo. That's great. Yeah, but um, early on training, I guess, for uh, becoming a dive master at that point, my instructor knew before I did that that's the direction I would go. What's a buddy for? Sharing air in an emergency and things like that. Yeah, hey, pay attention to your buddy. Don't, don't just be sleeping here at the bottom of the pool. You're his buddy. That's great. They were pretty much covered it, yeah. Okay. Becca, thanks for coming on. Yeah. Well, hope
hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening and tuning in to the Scuba Diving Podcast. None of this is possible without you being here. This show relies 100% on divers and the aquatically interested people just like you. Even something so simple as just hitting that five-star review or subscribe. That does wonders. There's lots of ways to help, contribute, donate. Everything is appreciated. And of course, check out our other series like the Down to 60 One Minute To The Point Dive Site Reviews. We're on pretty much every platform, Instagram, TikTok. Look for Sweetwater Scuba, Scuba Diving Channel, Scuba Diving Podcast. Links are definitely somewhere on your device. If you're on Spotify or YouTube, you can watch this in video form. Don't forget, if you know somebody that you think would add to this show and would make a great guest, then of course, dive at Sweetwater Scuba or keep it simple, sweetwaterscuba at gmail.com or just go on the website or direct message me on whatever platform you're on right now. Let's show the rest of the world the rest of the world and hope to see you underwater soon. Thank you.